Mr. Goh from the Chairman of the Masik Foundation, Mr. Bob Tan, Chairman of the IIT Board of Governors, Bruce Bo, Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Institute of Technical Education, the principals of the five polytechnics, <clears throat> chairpersons and speakers, excellencies, distinguished guests and overseas delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to see many uh, familiar faces in the audience whom I've had the pleasure of working with over a number of years. Welcome to the Singapore International Technical and Vocational Education and Training Conference 2012, and a very special welcome to our visitors from overseas. Singapore has always placed strong emphasis on technical and vocational education and training, or TVET in short. Over the past five decades, technical and vocational education has played a key role in Singapore's economic and social development, providing Singaporeans with the skills needed to secure good jobs and upgrade Singapore's economy. Technical and vocational education motivates our young people to continue their education and acquire the skills that make them job ready for a high technology globalized economy. Through technical and vocational education, working adults also have more avenues for continuing education and skills upgrading. This opens up more opportunities for meaningful and good jobs and helps to ensure lifelong employability as technology and jobs evolve. Today, in Singapore, close to two-thirds of each graduating secondary school cohort progresses on to one of our technical and vocational educational institutions. Over 40% enter our polytechnics, while about 25% enroll in the Institute of Technical Education, or ITE for short. Upon completing their studies, 9 out of 10 technical and vocational education graduates gain employment within six months of graduation. 92% of employers also affirmed that our technical and vocational education graduates possess not just the requisite skills, but also good work attitudes. And this has helped to keep Singapore's youth unemployment rate low relative to other parts of the world. In 2011, the average unemployment rate of residents aged 15 to 24 in Singapore was 6.7%. This was largely because people were waiting to, to take on their jobs. In comparison, the global youth unemployment rate was 12.6%, almost double the rate in Singapore. Youth unemployment in Singapore was also lower than most advanced Western and East Asian economies, including the United States, 17%, the United Kingdom, 21%, Germany, 8.5%, Hong Kong, 9.3%, South Korea, 9.6%, and Taiwan, 13%. I had the opportunity to be associated with the technical and vocational education sector over nearly seven years in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. And during this period, I was delighted to have seen the opening of the campuses of our third and fourth polytechnics, the Masik Polytechnic and Nanyang Polytechnic, and to see work start on our fifth, which is Republic Polytechnic. The groundwork for the 10-year master plan for our centralized IT colleges was also laid down during this period. It's a source of great satisfaction to see how the sector has further developed since then. And today, our technical and vocational education institutions offer some of the best programs and facilities in Singapore and in the region. This has, in no small part, been due to the dedicated and committed people who continue to serve in this sector, lecturers and staff, and the many partners that we have including the industry partners as well as our partners from overseas. ITE in particular has transformed many young lives through its unique brand of hands-on, minds-on, hearts-on education. By offering a myriad of opportunities for multidisciplinary learning, ITE is a valuable part of our comprehensive post-secondary education system that helps students to fulfill their potential and acquire skills for good jobs in a modern economy. The technical and vocational education sector provides many bridges and ladders 
for people to progress as far as they wish to in their education and training. ITE's 10-year master plan will soon be completed with the opening of the new ITE College Central in January 2013, in line with its one ITE, three colleges model. Although we have made good progress in technical and vocational education, our work is far from over. Over time, industry demands have evolved as the structure of our economy has changed from labour-intensive to skill-intensive industries, and now increasingly towards an innovation-intensive future. Education is a forward-looking enterprise. It seeks to prepare our young people for a society and economy that will only exist in 15 to 20 years in the future. A good understanding of the key forces driving future trends will therefore allow us to anticipate the competencies that we need to develop in our young people. So what will be required of technical and vocational education for the future? Our young people need skills that are current and will make them job ready. At the same time, they will need core skills and attitudes that will enable them to keep on learning and to keep pace with the changing world of work throughout their lives. Partnerships with industry are becoming increasingly important. With the rapid advance of technology, more and more jobs are being created in new and emerging economic sectors. Startups and smaller companies will also offer new and exciting jobs to complement larger companies and organizations. So it's not easy for such startups, new companies, to develop the apprenticeship models that have been used in many countries because it requires larger companies, long training times, and also stable technologies in order for those apprenticeship systems to work. And therefore, institution-based learning is also important. While institution-based learning, with its economies of scale, will continue to play a critical role in helping to build up technical knowledge in our technical and vocational education students, industry attachments and work experience remain key to a well-rounded and well-grounded technical and vocational education. The models adopted by our institutions have successfully blended theory and practice, bringing together learning in the institutional setting and real experience in the industrial setting. But we must always keep an eye on the horizon and stay up to date with the latest trends and developments. For our youth to succeed in tomorrow's world, they will also need greater adaptability and a stronger ability to collaborate with others including a good measure of cross-cultural intelligence that will enable them to work across boundaries, languages, and cultures. They will also need to build up multidisciplinary knowledge, new media literacy, and a total product or total service design mindset. Our focus in technical and vocational education has thus been to provide students with a holistic education to equip them with both industry-relevant training as well as 21st century competencies. As our economy transforms, Singaporeans will increasingly be seizing growth opportunities in regional and international settings. Therefore, a key component of holistic education at the IT and polytechnics has been their community and global education programs which include student exchanges, work attachments, community service, and sports and cultural events. Through these programs, students are exposed to global trends and developments and learn to better appreciate cultural diversity and different work practices. They also internalize values such as respect, responsibility, care, and appreciation for others, which are crucial in guiding our students to become socially responsible people. The Singapore government is also putting more resources into continuing education and training to facilitate lifelong learning and employability. And in fact, this is one of the reasons why we've invested in the polytechnics and the institutes of technical education, because they provide very good institutions 
for adult learners to come back to refresh their skills and to upgrade themselves. <clears throat> there are now more government subsidies for adult learners who take up programs at our technical and vocational institutions and a number of continuing education diploma level training places at the polytechnics increased by 60% last year. With these changes, there will be more bridges and ladders in our system, which will allow more Singaporeans to continually upgrade their skills and knowledge. In developing Singapore's own brand of technical and vocational education, we have worked over many years with many international partners and benefited from their experience. These include institutions and organizations from Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Switzerland, Thailand, the UK, and the US, among others. So as you visit our IT colleges and the polytechnics over the next few days, I'm sure you will find features in our programs that are very familiar to you. And that's because we borrowed many ideas from many people. At the same time, I hope that there may be some useful ideas that you can adapt for your own country or system so that we can all better achieve our objective of preparing our students for employment and life in a dynamic and globalized world through technical and vocational education. I'm sure that the issues raised in this conference will stimulate many lively discussions and provide valuable insights. And I also hope that you will forge many new friendships, partnerships, and networks over these few days. I wish all of you a fruitful conference, and it's now my pleasure to declare this conference open. Thank you very much.